Hello, another SQL video. Today let's talk about query tuning and index tuning. So many times I see developers and DBAs comparing execution plans and based on the cost percentage assigned by SQL Server to those execution plans, people take decisions. Let's take an example. Suppose you have a select statement, a select query, and you want to tune that. And as part of your tuning efforts, you have rewritten the T-SQL statement. And now you have like two versions, the older version and the new version. And you run both of them together and then jump over to the execution plan to look at the cost percentages to their execution plans assigned by SQL Server. And let's say your rewritten version has less cost, something like let's say 60% and 40%. And you would assume that your rewritten version is faster, better, and less expensive. And then you go with that plan or with that query. Now, that might not always be the right thing to do because the estimates, the cost estimates that the optimizer is giving you are purely estimates when the plans were being prepared. It is super critical that apart from looking at the execution plans and the cost percentages or the cost estimates for those plans, you should go and look into actual runtime statistics. Particularly, I'm talking about the IO stats and the time stats. Let's take an example, see things in action. So I am again going to use AdventureWorks 2016 here for the demo. Let's turn on statistics time and IO on and set some environment variables there. I'm going to deal with a table here called person dot person. Let's look at some indexes that we have on this table. Okay, so the query is running and then here are the indexes. Our focus is going to be on this index. So you can see there is an index on last name, first name, and middle name. So this is a non-clustered index and you have three columns as part of your index definition. And note the order, it's last name, first name, and middle name. Now let's jump over to this query. Look at the query, select first name from this table person.person .person, where first name is greater than A. Now don't, go into the business semantics of this query and why would this query make sense. It's just an engineer demo to get a concept across to you. So let's say this is a query and actual execution plan is turned on or just press control M and let's go and execute and see what happens. Remember you want only one column first name. Let's go and execute this and you have the predicate also on first name. You get the data out and let's jump over to the execution plan and what do you see? First thing that you will observe that SQL Server decides to implement a scan to execute this query and it's scanning which object. Let's take the cursor over here and zoom and you can see that it is scanning this index that I talked about, last name, first name and middle name. And rightly so because this column that you need first name is available in the index. So the optimizer did not go to the base table, all the columns that it wants is available in this index. However, there is no seek because last name is the first column and because if you're not seeking on the first column, you're not able to seek on the second column as well. So the optimizer decides to do a scan. Fair enough. One more thing comes to your attention here, which is the missing index hint. So SQL Server is telling you that there probably could be a better index available, uh, should be there. And if we implement that index, we may get a performance impact of 82%. Let's go and see what this index is all about. Right click and go to the missing index details and SQL Server is telling you, go ahead and create an index on first name. Now this makes sense uh, on the face of it, isn't it? That you know you should go ahead and create an index on first name because your query has a predicate on first name. And if you have an index on first name, or any index where first name is the first column, probably the optimizer may even seek. Let's go and do that. So I'm going to go to query, specify value for template parameters, and let's say idx underscore f name. Let's call this index as idx first name, and let's go ahead and create this index. Okay, the index is created now, and now let's go and run this query again. Now, when I run this query now, um, of course, uh, you would expect that the optimizer, optimizer will choose this index that you have just created. We all expect that. Let's go and execute this 
and jump over to the execution plan and there you go it is actually using this index which is idx f name and uh, this is a seek so that's the other thing that you see so everything is good here you have this new index which is being used by the optimizer because optimizer thinks that of course this is a better index to use from a cost perspective and it is seeking also now the point is what's the performance difference that you are getting and this is the crux of uh, this demo this tutorial and why why i talked about estimations versus actual runtime metrics so now what we are going to do is we are going to compare both the queries and this is what we would generally do in real world right developers and dbas we have this the first version and this was the version the older version let's say where the optimizer was actually using the other index on last name first name and middle name so what we are going to do is we're going to take this let the optimizer choose whatever it wants which is first name and compare it with what it was earlier and we are going to look at performance difference so let's select both of them and execute and jump over to the execution plan. And I started off this video with an introduction. And this is what I mean is when you look at multiple execution plans, like different versions of your T-SQL queries, uh, be it the query itself or the usage of index, you are comparing the cost percentage here. Now you can see that the first one has a 41% cost assigned by the optimizer and the older version of the query when it was using that other index the cost is 59%. Let's zoom in and see. So we have 41% versus 59%. This one of course uses uh, implements a seek and this one is scanning. Now on the face of it of course this makes sense that the first index is more useful and it gives you a cheaper execution plan as well so you, you should stick with it makes sense but here is a word of caution do not judge the performance only by these estimates these estimates are given to you by the optimizer when it was evaluating multiple plans so these are still estimates it is super critical that you go and look into the actual runtime statistics. More importantly, index is all about getting uh, to the data faster. So how many reads are being implemented here? That's very important. So because when you go and uh, scan, of course, you are reading more pages. When you're seeking, you're reading less pages. So the IO factor is an important metric. And the second important metric is the total execution time. Now, just because you get advantage on a few reads IO, uh, but the overall execution time is more or less same, you wouldn't really want to have another index in place because when you have an index uh, which is still sta satisfying your query, it may not be the best one. You don't want another index and cause more redundancy in your database. So the point is do not depend on these estimations go and look into actual runtime metrics now let's do that so jump over to the messages tab and you know we turned on statistics time and io what i'm going to do is just turn off actual execution plan so that you have less noise in the messages tab and execute them again now i am not going to get the execution plan only the stats let's go and look into this what are you seeing here so if you look at the Runtime metrics, 377 milliseconds versus 359 milliseconds. Wow. Which is the first one is taking slightly more time in total elapsed time. And the second one, which is using the other old index is 359 milliseconds. So there's hardly any difference, any comparable, noticeable difference in the total execution time. The only difference here is in the logical reads. The new index that you created has 66 IO like logical reads and of course the older index has 109. There is some difference in IO but absolutely no difference in terms of the total execution time. Now this makes me think is the new index worth it even though the optimizer suggested or you know those missing index hint suggested that if we go and create an index on first name it's going to give us like 82 percent performance impact but the overall difference in performance here is negligible totally negligible and it's not worth it going and creating a new index and also note why logical reads are like 66 here 
simply because this is a narrower index. The new index that you created is only on first name. If that index was also like first name, middle name and last name, then the logical reads, the number of pages probably would have been more, maybe closer to what we have here. Let's go and do that. Suppose I am going to, let's drop this index that we created and go back here and let me just modify this index. And instead, um, just apart from first name, let's also go and take last name and let's also go and take middle name. And that should do the job. Let's go and create this index once more. And now you have two indexes which are kind of similar in terms of the amount of data they hold. The only difference is now in this index, you have first name as the first column and the other one you have last name as the first column. Of course, the optimizer is still going to use this new index that you have created. Let's go and verify that first. Let's go and execute, jump over to the execution plan. Yes, this index is still being used. You can see that. Well, because first name is the first column here. And let's jump over to the messages tab. I'm going to turn off actual execution plan, run both of them together to show you the final leg of this demo. Jump over to the messages tab. There you go. 105 reads, 109 reads, more or less same. And the amount 392, 331 totally negligible. This demo is not about missing index hints or the order of columns or um, uh, trying uh, uh, the different uh, uh, versions of the index or the query. This demo and the learning here is about just don't look at these percentages when you are comparing your queries you know for their execution performance just don't look at execution plan and these percentages please go and look into the actual runtime statistics the io and the time factor and when it comes to time factor please have a look at cpu time as well as elapsed time both are equally important how much time your thread is spending on cpu and what's the overall total execution time. This is very, very critical when you're rewriting queries, when you are seeing different versions of the queries, when you're playing around with different indexes and you are redesigning your indexing strategy, actual runtime statistics are very critical. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com there's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.